I was born in Chicago, but I moved here when I was seven. Uh, so we're a, we're a local family. My mother went to school here, my older brother went to school here. It was just a family tradition. When I was a, uh, going to high school, we came to football games here. I sold Cokes at the football games. Southern Miss was just in the family. Just the right thing to do. I was from Hattiesburg at the time, and uh, I was too poor to go anywhere else. <laughs> but I'm glad I went to Southern. I loved it. I had a wonderful time. Through Pete, of course. He was a student here, uh, played football in 41 and 46 with the war in between. And uh, in 1955, he was offered the job of an assistant football coach for Ivan and Reed Green. And we came. We came here for the job. I graduated from East Mississippi Junior College at Scuba, Mississippi in 1953 and uh, entered my third year at Southern in, in the spring of 53. Went to summer school and graduated the following year. Since we were so close to the classroom buildings, I decided to go back and take some college courses. I had dropped out during the war, uh, worked for a chemical company and part of the effort, and uh, decided to go back to school. Took my classes one at a time, one a semester, and uh, over, over time it took me 11 years to get my bachelor's degree, but I finally made it. I hadn't really planned on coming to Southern Miss. I had uh, come over here to take the ACT, uh, sent my score here, but I was planning to go to another university. Had uh, a major that I'd picked out when I was an Eagle Scout, so I uh, decided that I was going to you know, be a chemical engineer. Uh, summer before I started school, uh, I got a letter from Southern saying they'd like for me to come for an interview for the uh, honors program. And I came over here, did the interview. Uh, was kind of selected as an alternate, and then someone didn't decide decided not to become to take the scholarship. So I ended up in the program, and that was a decision that was easy to make. I ended up at Southern Miss as a long desire to co to get an education, one, and to escort another student who was 18 years old, Gwendolyn Elaine Armstrong. And we came in 1965, September. You know, I came to the United States in 1969 to learn English uh, for a 10-week English course that was offered by the Latin American Institute. I had had a, a previous occasion to come to the United States and I realized that my English was very poor. So when I went back to Chile, I did some research and I found out that this course was offered here at Southern and uh, I came. I, uh, study hard and work hard at it and uh, I was able to pass the TOEFL after 10 weeks and then I decided that I could go to school here, uh, work my way through it and get a degree so I stayed for life. I was a cheerleader all the way through school, the fraternity I was involved in. I was rush chairman I think three years in a row. I was very active on campus, too active. I should have been studying. I was a pike, and I lived in the pike house. And uh, that was really my main avocation at that time. I was uh, involved in the soccer team. Uh, I played for four years for the university when, you know, there was no scholarships or anything like that. We just got a group together and played different schools and uh, won a few championships. Uh, I was also involved on the International Student Association and I became their president in the second year. So it allowed me at the time to build uh, quite a bit of network uh, internationally. I started teaching here in 1987 um, and got a chance to begin teaching on international studies programs in 1992. So. I'm so lucky and blessed that I've had a chance to do for today's students what my teachers and program directors did for me. I would uh, get the four children off to school in the morning, it was hectic, and then drop the youngest one at the um, 
home economics building and I would rush off to my classes and I remember in particular when the first class was music appreciation, what a relief it was after this hectic morning to sit down and listen to beautiful music. I worked all the time. I worked at the Hub and I poured coffee and I worked at Shoney's and I worked at the uh, English labs and I, I run the lab tapes so I was able to meet a lot of people and flirt with girls and do things like that. Really, I went to, to Southern in 53 planning to play football for H.A. Smith, the end coach back down there. And uh, that summer was real hot and uh, the girls were real pretty and uh, the beer was real cold. <laughs> so I, I gave up my football aspirations and uh, decided to finish the following year. There's one thing that happened to me here at Southern Miss that I'll never forget. Uh, I was in the band, I was in the pride, I was a drummer. And we had just warmed up before the game and had gone up and sat in the stands. We sat at the very bottom of the stands back then. And the crowd was filing in and we were sitting there talking to one another. And I hear boing, and I look down at my drum, and a football has flown off the field, on my drum head, went through it, and into the drum. So now I can't play. I, I can't march at halftime. So I got up, stood over to pick up my drum, and as I lifted it, I heard rip, that real unhappy sound. And my pants had split, but not in a normal way. These were old band uniforms that we had on, so it split from one knee all the way around to the other knee. I was wearing a dress. And don't forget, there's lots of girls in the band, and there's maybe 200 people sitting behind me. So I've just mooned everybody in the whole band. I'm glad I wore a clean pair of underwear that day. And it's everybody's high school nightmare come true. Too many. You don't have enough time. <laughs> or we don't have enough time. But I had a good time. I was, I was pretty much a party boy. There was a group of young ladies, and I think it was rush week and they were riding around in their convertible, some sitting on the back, some sitting on the seats, uh, front and back. And they stopped and they were just giggling and laughing and they stopped and asked me if I was one of the colored girls going to the school and I said, yes, I am one of those colored girls. And they went off in their little limousine just to cackling. I guess the, the most favorite uh that I have is in 1953 when we beat Alabama. They were highly rated and uh, we went to Tuscaloosa and uh, we brought some of the goalposts back to Southern that night. It's very special for me that my son recently graduated from Southern and uh, that's probably my most special moment. I think our biggest event was going to graduations. Uh, Pete went on and got a master's. I had three degrees. All five of our children graduated from USM. And then um, two of them went on for master's and Barbara got a doctorate. So in total, our family has 13 university degrees. That's 13 graduations and they were all wonderful and uh, we might have set a record, I don't know. I was studying British history when I was here. I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to teach British history. And in the Honors Forum series one fall when I was a student, they had a speaker named Sir Harold Wilson, ex-Prime Minister of Britain. Ex-Prime Minister of Britain is a pretty cool thing when you're studying British history. So I went all dressed up and went. And I even worked up a nerve, enough nerve to ask a question, raise my hand. The Prime Minister answered my question. And it must have been a question he liked, because after the whole thing was over, he walked right down to me, and we started talking, continuing to talk about that question. So we get to McCain Library in one of those downstairs rooms. I don't know, there's maybe 40, 50 people there for the reception, and he's still talking to me. And again, this is still great. And, and then it's time for the formal part of the reception, where you know, he's got to answer a few questions. So he sits down and he motions to the chair right next to him for me to sit down. And well, this is just so great. I sit down next to him and, and, and things are fixing to start. And then I look up and kind of pay attention. 
everybody else is sitting on the floor, including right in front of me, right where you're sitting, Dr. Aubrey Lucas, the president. I was sitting in Aubrey Lucas's chair, and this is, oh, I'm mortified, I'm so embarrassed at this point. And, and I start real nervously getting up, and I'll never forget it. Aubrey put on a big grin and said, son, you sit there next to the prime minister, I'm fine right here. And that meant so much to me that day, that that taught me as much as anything else what Southern Miss was about. The president gave his seat up for a student. That's what Southern Miss is about. We care about students here. And that just meant the world to me. Well, the best moment in my life was having met my sweetheart when she arrived here on campus as a freshman. And uh, we've been married 38 years, so that was very, very special. This is my favorite Southern Miss moment. The fact that I was uh, nominated and inducted into the Hall of Fame means a great deal. You can be recognized world around the world, but when home recognizes you, it is the best of feelings. So this, this moment is my favorite moment. I think Southern is doing a good job. When I went there to begin with, we were not even a university. But uh, I think we're doing well and uh, generally headed in the right direction. Well, yeah, I'm very impressed with your uh, president. I think she's wonderful. And, uh, and all the people I've met, I think you're, they're doing a great job. I mean, you know, you have to consider when I was there, I think there were probably 500 students. How many do you have now? Thousands. A few months ago, a, a grandson of, I, of ours took me for a nostalgia ride and walk around the campus. And I was amazed. I had no idea the university had grown so much, built so many beautiful buildings. It's a beautiful campus. I think we have a very um, realistic opportunity to, you know, continue to grow and continue to be, you know, a very well-recognized university. You know, I do believe that with all the news that we have, with the new School of Nursing, with the new College of Business, we have, A, the opportunity to be the best school in Mississippi. There's no question about that. But I'm also hopeful that with the new co uh, College of Business, that we will be on the top 25 uh, as acknowledged by the U.S. World's News Report, and I certainly believe we have the right leadership to accomplish that. I absolutely believe USM is headed in the right direction. Uh, as far as students of color, we certainly stand out in the state and in the entire United States. Being inducted to the Hall of Fame means to me the world. Um, this place was my family before I got here. Uh, and then in, uh, when I was a student, it fundamentally altered who I was, and it was my family. And now I've been so lucky for over 20 years to have it be my, my work family as well. And to have your family recognize you like that is just so important and meaningful. It's priceless. Well, it's, they almost waited too late <laughs> at my age, but it means a lot. I'm very flattered and very pleased. Today I got a letter from Bob Pierce telling me that there were, I believe, 120,000 graduates from USM and 250 of those were in the Hall of Fame. I consider it a great honor to be part of that group. It's a real honor and uh, I'm proud to be among this year's group. Ever since I finished at Southern, I've always felt the need to, to try to pay back, to just be involved, to just show my support um, through my involvement and through, you know, donations. And it's just a, it's an amazing thing. I feel like I've won the lottery. I honestly know that, you know, to be involved and be, to be uh, picked for the Hall of Fame is something that's just going to always be something that I will be forever indebted. It means a lot to my family because they were all afraid that I would certainly die when I came out here. 
and I stand on the shoulders of Clyde Kennard who attempted to come here and also I believe his name was John Frazier who had been turned down from USM but I know that people like him gave me the courage to want to open the, uh, the doors of USM and I'm so happy that USM dictated that there would, school would go on as usual. And I'm very happy that happened because it made it so much easier for us. We had it hard enough being out of the bottom, but we certainly came to the top. You know, it's a source of pride for me. It's a source of pride for my entire family. I get to share these things with my grandkids and hopefully you become uh, somebody that they aspire to be and that they aspire for high education, they aspire to help the alma mater that you go to. So I'm, I'm very proud also to be part and in company of so many other successful women and men that have preceded me. Southern Mississippi to the top. Southern Miss to the top. Southern to the top. Southern Miss 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 to the top.